Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, I rip our guest a new one. So do I. And so does Kristen. Dark Mark is here. And actually, Kristen is here too with me in my closet live. And so is Dark Mark. We're all in person, which is wonderful. Um, so the show will flow much better. But yes, I'm going to tell why he's not getting the attraction that he deserves from the ladies. So keep listening. <laughs> It's your host, Kristen Carney, here with Marnie Kinris, literally here yes. in the studio with Marnie Kinris. Face to face. This face time, to face. not in separate closets, no. in the exact same I did one bring together. the toys up here, though. Mm-hmm. The Legos, tr- trucks, things like that, that. me? Oh, my gosh. My computer is ringing. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry for the distraction. So, yeah. So, Marnie and I are here in person. I am um, enjoying this very much. And we have Dark Mark with us, who is a goth comedian. Yes, I am. And mm. I don't know if I've ever heard that term before. It kind of sounds like an oxymoron to me. You would think so, but there's actually more goth comedians that have cla- crawl- crawled out of the crypt, so to speak. Right. I was just, uh, I was just conferring. I, I was messaging uh, Oliver Graves. Who's, is that a comedian? Yeah, he was on America's Got Talent. Oh, okay. okay. Is and he goth? They, he's goth, too. Really? Because I have goth comedian on social media. And he was like, I was going to do goth comic, but I wanted to ask you first. Oh, very and, respectful and, and, for us, the goth community. And there's Virginia Jones is very funny. Uh, there's a transsexual goth comedian in England. Mm, not surprising. Okay. Well, Beth, well, Bethany Black. Before we start listing all the goth comedians. Because <laughs> um, I know everyone's here listening for goth comedians. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> what is goth? What does that actually mean? Well, it's different things to different people. Okay. To okay, me, good. it's uh, <laughs> it's... It's a musical style, but not everybody agrees what musical style to me, it is. It seems like the '90s. That's partly the '90s. That's when it that's when it peaked, but it never goes away. It's still here, especially in L.A. Really? I don't know about New York, but L.A. the nightclub scene. I don't think New York would have a huge goth scene, even though I still don't really know. They what goth they, scene. they do, do they do, but uh, the goth scene has never gone away in L.A. And a lot of it crosses over with the fetish club scene. It's a lot of people wearing black. Mm-hmm. Black is. It's very attractive, so it makes sense, yeah. Wearing makeup, guys wearing makeup, women wearing makeup. Okay. But what's like the underbelly of the goth community? Like, what is the central Besides theme? Satan. Right, yeah. It's not Satan. That's <laughs> the funniest. No, no, you, you laugh, but uh, people, people assume that. I, I went out with a, a nurse who was a born-again Christian, and she broke up with me because she thought I was satanic. Right. I took her to a goth belly dancing. She's like, put on some color. <laughs> right. <laughs> I took her to a goth belly dancing festival that I hosted. Wow. So the reason we're talking about this is to talk to our listeners about being different or unique in dating. Right. And there are groups of people that are into certain things that may seem strange to other people, but there's lots of people into it also. Right. So how did you connect with a goth scene? Well, it's interesting. Uh, I, I stumbled onto it quite by accident in San Diego. Oh, I, it seems so not goth. It's too sunny to be goth there. Yeah, exactly. How do you, you guys exist in Angeles. sunny California? No, you should exist like only in like Seattle or wherever it's Transylvania. rainy. Transylvania. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. No. <laughs> I haven't seen no. Well, this was in this, yeah. This was uh, Transylvania. <laughs> this was uh, yeah. This is early early two thousands. I was just I was I don't know what I was doing. I was in some parking lot somewhere. I think I was renting a video. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Back in renting the day. A, in yeah. the parking lot, you were renting a video? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well I, now I, it's technically a parking lot because it was right, 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 right. video stores Blockbuster. that are now just parking lots. But there was a, there was, it was a tower video and there was a club next to tower video. And I saw this woman walk in that just had the most pale skin, most beautiful Tights. You were like, is she even alive? That's yes. so attractive. Exactly. Love her. To me, it is. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, the varicose veins, all that stuff. But no, I, I we're disgusting God. to him right now. Because <laughs> we don't have any. Because we're olive. I actually currently have on mm. self tanner, which I normally See? don't wear. So usually I'm paler. You might like me better next week when it washes <laughs> off. I was going to say, I can't wait. But uh, <laughs> So I, I, I followed her in. I said, what is going on? And I love the music. I love the style. And I thought it was great. Of course, stupid me. I was like, I'm going to wear color and stand out. <laughs> that was mistake number one. Who's this freak? Exactly. Yeah. He's got blue yeah, on. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was wearing, yeah. I was wearing like surf shirts and like, you San know. San Diego stuff. Yeah. Like, bright, mm, bright, yeah. bright colors and everything. I thought I'd stand out and people were like, no, we don't want you. Yeah. 
Then I started wearing black, started getting into it. And that's how I got. And then I was already doing comedy. And I started going out with a witch. Was her name Kristen? No, it was Mia. Oh, I thought it was me. Uh, yeah, that was really <laughs> <laughs> such that's a where, bad joke. That's I'm, where my brain I'm went to. Dad oh, jokes. Mia. Yeah, always. Are you, you, are... Are you, are you a witch? No, but my hair is long enough to be a witch. Although I had somebody on my show uh, that said that all independent women are witches. I, I, all I strong think that's independent true. women. What's your definition of a witch? Uh, her definition was different than mine. I thought it was somebody that studied the occult, knew how to do spells. But she said, every strong, independent woman makes their own destiny. So they're controlling the universe, so they're a witch. Ooh. Interesting. Kind of like but it that. is interesting because you've yeah. said this twice now. Like, everybody defines it differently. It is just interesting to mm-hmm. open up the door a bit and see how people define things. Because uh, we, we were talking on our last episode about mindset and self-beliefs and people getting locked in by what some, something somebody says. But as you've just shown twice, that statements that two people can make can mean completely different things to each individual. Which is good because I, I need to get out of my current mindset because it's not doing me any good. Right. Okay. So then let's talk about that. Enough about goth. Let's talk about dating because you have some things that you, you know, you did want to cover today, but why don't we go first into dating for you and what's going on? And then, I mean, a couple of other things you want to talk about was being a larger man, um, Mm -hmm. asking goths out, uh, approaching women who are kind of nerdy. So yeah. let, let, let's talk about you and dating. See, I, I feel bad being on the show because I'm not an expert. You always have experts on. I'm not an expert. I mean, I am now, actually, by the way. If anyone wants to hire you, me, please that, go yeah. to ChristianCarney.com. Put that hat on. You are the expert help. now. <laughs> right. Um, but, no, it's even better to hear people who are not experts right. talking about what's going on. But I had you on my show. Yeah. The Dark Mark show. hmm And there was a point, and I, I love when this happens when guests, when you got out of the, the Marnie thing and you got real. Is that me. not what happens every day on this podcast? Uh, not always. No, but I, because you're like, you want me to tell you what's really wrong with you? I said, yeah, please. And then you, you told me what you oh, perceived was really yeah. wrong. You turned what I Patty said. Stanger? Yeah. Oh, no. I, it was not. Because <laughs> I was telling crazy. You some really. And I actually gave solid advice. So I was not like Patty yeah, Stanger at all. The opposite. No, I was giving her some really bad, like, worst case scenarios that have happened to me that happened to me a lot. And so what are those worst case scenarios? Oh, I don't even want to get into it, but. Uh, just horrible, horrible things. Uh, I, I answered a Craigslist ad. Mm. I see it. Well, there's, for, your, there's for, your first, first problem. Oh, wait, yeah. a, wait a second. This is, I answered Craigslist. Listen to this story because I didn't tell this when you were on my show. The woman was blind. I wrote this letter. She's like, that's the most romantic thing any man's but ever. But I did not read a word of it. No, no. It's funny. But uh, <laughs> she's like, uh, it's one of the most romantic things I've ever. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to see you. Send me a picture so my friends can tell me what you look like. Mm. I sent her what I perceive was the best picture I have. Never heard from her again. Okay, she mm. wasn't attracted to you. I've been on Bumble for four months. I haven't had one match, mm. one message. Is that normal? Yeah. For some people, there's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> for some, I guess I'm with some people. Well, I think Bumble most likely you have to. I think you have to look in the spaces, and I think this will come in handy on the show. I think you have to look in spaces where your niche is, and I don't think people on Bumble are your niche necessarily they're more probably you know people into wearing different colors and i don't i'm not saying that in an insulting way but it's like i feel like there should be a dating they're into community. white people not black people For, is that what your racist continent no, oh i was trying to make, make me a, sound that one, i was trying white. to make like a, a cheesy no dad joke he's wearing, just well, like you he's wearing all black he's wearing all black for the people listening we're not uh, racist okay i was gonna say i what did do a horrible that? thing at the gym today Never mind, it was racist. Oh, what'd you do? <laughs> don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> it wasn't racist on purpose. I don't even know if it was racist. And now people are going to get mad at me for saying something that might be racist. So I went up to this one girl today that works at the front desk at my gym. And I said, oh, Kristen. Her name's Kristen. Well, actually, it's not. But it's <laughs> I thought her name was Kristen. Can you help me with this? She goes, oh, I'm not Kristen. And Kristen was the other black girl that works oh, there. But they said, oh. oh, I thought they look a lot yeah. alike. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I'm a huge oh. asshole right now. And then I. Who just did that? Somebody just did that thing about the Gail King interview. Oh, Paul yeah. and Fox News said uh, Robin Roberts did such a great interview with oh, Kelly. Oh, no. It well, was, they, it was don't Oprah's. they actually look alike, though? I think they actually do. And, and they were like, no, that's, that's Gail King. That's the thing. You can still look alike and be in the same race. Like, Marty and I may, we don't look alike, but say we look alike. That's what you don't at all. Right. But say we did for the sake of argument. And mm-hmm. you were like, oh, Marnie to me. And I said, no, I'm Kristen. It wouldn't be racist. It would be like, oh, right. It'd just you be look like, alike. oh, you look alike. Right. I know. No. Anyway, back to your story. So, well, yes. back to so all, you all, back to all Jews look alike. They do. 
<laughs> Apparently so. Go ahead. I'm not insulted by it at all. <laughs> I, didn't... I was actually going to go back and say, oh, but I think That's all Jews are like, That was going to be my I'm not racist. Are you is really? That, oh. No, I like Jewish. I like, I like the Jewish look sometimes for the most part. Because I have the Jewish look and I'm not Jewish. You I do wouldn't, have the Jewish I wouldn't look. think you're Jewish based off of your, your outfit. outfit. Yeah, well, but. So it kind of gives away the non. There are goth Jews. Yeah, I feel like far and few between. I don't you'd, know. You'd be surprised. I don't, do they wear that? Like how superficial. Nobody, nobody, wears, Definitely a black, nobody wears this. They wear a there black yarmulke, right. for sure. There you go. Yeah. But that, uh, I go back to what you were saying. Okay, no, so no, hat, no matches on hat. Bumble. We yeah. were talking about going out to I, uh, other... It's been, yeah, I've, it's been a while since I've experienced sex with another person. It's, I, I'm, it's, it, I, I had a breakup with, with somebody. Did I you experience LA. sex with a non-person recently? Uh, <laughs> with myself, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> not, not today, mm-hmm. but uh, a, a very recently. Okay. Okay. So, oh, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you seem to want all the details. So, uh, no, it just, uh, <laughs> I was in a relationship. We broke up. I went to LA and um, it just, uh, things were going okay. I just, it, it, I just, I've had a lot of like near misses since I've been there, since I've been mm-hmm. in LA. And now it's getting to the point where I can, I see it shows. It shows where? <laughs> in you emotionally? In me when I approach a woman. Okay, so you're feeling insecure. Yes, because I think, and uh, women know. Mm-hmm. They have a sixth sense. I need to restart the clock is basically what it is. Mm-hmm. Well, restart if, I, it. if I had sex tonight with another woman, that, that's what I've been trying to do. So that's what would reset it for you. That would reset it. getting then, confidence then, then, then to I say, I can in, have sex. Yeah. So go hire a prostitute, have sex, and then it's reset. Is that what I should do? If that's what you need. I need to please a woman, though. Why can't you please a prostitute? They're a prostitute. Sex worker. Why? She can still be pleased. Can she? Or do you have any female friends that you can have sex with? No, that, that's another problem. Why? You that's can't, you can't say to somebody, I just want to pleasure you and I have to reset my clock. You don't think any of your female friends would say, okay, let's do it. No. Really? I really don't. Well, because you've tried it. You need or to because... find new friends. Yeah. I always say yes to my friends who want to have sex. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I don't think that's normal. Marnie. No, but that's Is what that we normal? discussed on my show. I, I have a lot of extraordinary beautiful female friends yes who are very open very interesting very open who, if, Tell if them, it was approached that way i think that you it, think if i went up to one of my female friends and said, i think what? that girl with who can bend yeah. i think she would have done <laughs> totally done it. She, really <laughs> she's uh, elastic girl the uh, oh. uh, burlesque dancer oh. <laughs> she she fits into an r2d2 she could fit in the suitcase she literally was like lifting her legs up and yeah. doing crazy stuff um yeah you I, should yeah because really, i think she broke up with a boyfriend well there you go and broke her leg right no, she, she's no, I'm very yeah, flexible. Oh, yeah. I know. I there you go. I'm that's very flexible. One. Actually, before... Let's see this. Remember, Hold on. Oh, that's good. Remember, oh, yeah. I have a picture of <laughs> doing this in your... I've right. been doing a lot more of it, so for people... Uh, oh, good job. I, I was very impressed when you could do it before. I yeah. am doing a leg lift <laughs> very leg lift, high. Yes. Well, okay, let's let's give an assessment here for Mark okay. of what, what you think is going on and be brutal. Aww. Please. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm too heavy. We got that. Yeah, it's but that's not being too heavy. That's not a deterrent. I think it's not you give no sexual air to to an extent of, you know, if you're in a chair in Walmart and you can't get up to get your bag of chips and you have to have right. someone put it in your cart for you. Yeah, yeah. that's a problem. Okay. But you're not at that point. Okay. You're, you're, so, a, you're a bigger dude, which is, I can right. s- still find absolutely attractive. I think you need to go to your marketplace or the place that's you, because if I'm a girl on Bumble and I come across you, right. I'm swiping left. Me too. You're wearing all black. That's weird. So those those aren't the pictures I have on Bumble. I have I have regular. Don't pictures you want to be you though? Like I, you I, don't want to do, misrepresent. I'm not misrepresent. Okay. I don't go. I, I'm not wearing makeup now. I wear makeup during my show, but not. I'm, I'm you know I don't do it on a regular basis. And what do you have in your profile? Uh, as a bio, I'd have to look. Uh, just uh, I th- I you know just I describe myself. Just uh, do you say I'm dark, Mark? Like. No. No, I do not. Do you say? Do you say you're uh, into gothic funny, things? intelligent, uh, uh, looking for looking for uh, looking for someone a little unusual. Okay, okay. So but, I you think... said I, I give off no sexual vibe whatsoever. I wanted to get on that. Yeah. Well, the. What you I mean, just you're not said, trying to give off a sexual vibe here between us, right. but that's what I'm guessing is going on. But you just said, let me just jump in quick. You said you're looking for someone unusual. Chances of the unusual people finding Bumble are very low. So I think you're looking in the wrong place for the type of people you're looking for. Right. Well, I, I, I have no qualms about meeting somebody that's 
not goth, not as if I Yeah, but, if, but then have, if you're saying I want you like, something unusual, you're already... I, I, would, I, would, I, I would like somebody that's a little... So then use different <sighs> words like quirky or a little bit weird, because right. I would be drawn to the word weird. Yeah. Okay. But unusual, I'd be like, what are you looking for? That would put me off, to right. be honest. And I will be honest, like, it, in swiping, if your picture did come up... Like you're, you're not for the mass audiences. Your mm-hmm. look is not for the mass audiences. So you're not going to get a lot of swipe rights. Okay. With how you're looking right now. Okay. Well, I want to dress up but for you. You look nice. Well, you I do know, look nice. But you do look nice. But like that style is not, especially in Los Angeles, I'd be like, are you going to perform magic for me later? What are, what's going to happen? Like right, that. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But yeah, not, but the not right, for the, to the right person. It's the right. right thing. Right. But for a certain audience, like if you go to the Magic Castle, God, you're already in. Right. Exactly. Right. So I'm saying you have to be more in your and, and, world. And I can get you in if you want. I know a lot of magicians. <laughs> have you been before? Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. But yeah. But I, so, so, so that going on for sure, like you have amazing eyes. Mm-hmm. I would you definitely do. do something that would highlight your eyes more right. in your picture. Not necessarily makeup. Not, not eyeliner. Yeah. No, not <laughs> eyeliner and mascara. But yeah, right. something but that right shows lighting. your eyes. And then I would get rid of the... But this is the thing. If you want to appeal to the masses, I would lose a few pounds. I would get rid of the goatee. Mm-hmm. Beard, um, beards are in. If you want to have facial hair, do the full beard. I've had the full beard. Uh, uh, but oh yeah, you could, I, I recommend probably shaving, but a full beard over a goatee will get more swipes. Women are into the beard right now. Yeah. I think most of, my, most of my pictures actually have a full beard, but okay. uh, the, uh, the reason I did the goatee was I, I shaved my head bald. and Grew back fast. Yeah. You're well, my friend had, hair. My, well, my, promote that. <laughs> yeah. well, my friend, well, my friend had cancer, so I, I shaved it, you know, oh, sympathy. Nice. And then, uh, so... The beard with the with the bald head, I don't I don't like that look. Yeah, no, you don't need to be no, beard bald head. Be so I have the beard with the nice goatee, hair. which is a weird look on me because I, you know, from the neck up, I look like Goldberg the wrestler. From the neck down, I look like Goldberg the accountant. But uh, it just, it, you know, so I had to throw one joke in there. But uh, <laughs> you know, but I, I I didn't do it for the story. I did it because I was sympathetic to my friend. And so when I grew back well, my hair... Well, there was no question that you are a good person. I right. knew that from the second that I met you, from the second you wrote to me, from the second and, and, you walked in the door. And I'm sure Kristen could sense that as well. Right. But in terms yeah, of... If you can shine through as a good person all while wearing all black, that says a lot. Right. It speaks volumes. Because right. normally, you know, if someone walks in wearing all black and um, has their hair... Is your hair dyed black? Yeah. You would normally kind of go, ooh, it's kind of intense. But you have a very friendly, welcoming, opening vibe. I didn't feel intimidated scared. or scared of you. Should I go with the intensity? Or, I mean, that's... No, because you naturally have a lovely, inviting energy. So I would embrace that and not mm-hmm. shy away from it. Right. And the reason I grow facial hair, period, is, as you know, I'm covering up the double chin. Well, it's not working. Okay. <laughs> I still see it. <laughs> I still see it on both sides of the goatee. Right. Okay. So then if you want to cover that up, then put, then either lose weight or grow a beard. Right. I'm not saying that like you can't be a heavier guy and attract women. Mm-hmm. My husband is about 50 pounds overweight. I find him very attractive right now. Right. I'm, I mean, maybe not the big gut that hangs out, but it, I, I'm still attracted to him. So I'm, right. not, I'm not saying that that's a deterrent for you. I do think that the fact that you don't have a bit of an edge, like, in, okay, so in this outfit, just like what Kristen said before, when you walk in the door, you're expecting somebody who does have a bit of mystique, a little bit of anger, maybe some frustration, mm-hmm. and something that could draw you in in that way. But then when you have this warm smile and this outfit, then I'm like, are you going to perform a, perform a card trick? That's literally what I yeah, think. Yeah, you know they're... what? There's like a little cognitive dissonance between the energy that you're trying to put out which is the dark thing or what i think would but be. then what's naturally coming out which is a lightness mm-hmm. you know so i think there's a mismatch and that can make people uneasy because it's not allowing them to know who you are because you don't know who you are you might know but what it reads is oh he i don't know how to make i don't know what to make of him so he well it's interesting you say that because that's what marnie was saying on the podcast oh interesting that uh that I wasn't, you didn't think I was 100% what I was going for. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it seems like you're trying to have a brooding, dark vibe, but it's like, no, 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 we see through it. You're really nice. Ditch the black. But we're not, I'm not telling you to change, but that's how it comes across. Mm-hmm. Like, it's almost like if I dyed my hair platinum blonde, people would be like, okay, Kristen, like, we what? see what you're trying to do. We know you're not a blonde. Right. It would feel unnatural because that's not my personality. It's not who I am. It's forced. But then if you, if you went to my my friends that are in the fetish world, in the goth world, in the rock world, 
They would say the exact opposite. They would say what? They would say the edge is what, even in the comedy world, the edge is what makes you. And, you know. Yeah, but, in, but I, I don't think a sense any edge, edge from Right, you. we don't get edge. We just see black clothing. You see what I'm saying? No, but I, it, people have seen my act. People that have seen me out in edgy situations. Hey, you, this is Marnie, and thanks for listening to the Ask Women podcast. Hey, do me a favor. Take a quick moment to give us some feedback on our iTunes page. We'd really love to know what you think of us. And also, give us five stars, just because. I was saying, you, you don't have any edge. And I don't know, you know, how much we were able to cover before, but I was saying, like, it's just very inconsistent. You're, but, you're, but it, you're sweet and warm and kind and sincere. You have a look. Those that, are not attractive qualities. They're attractive qualities if they're, if it's consistent <laughs> and then you can also own who you are. Like for me right now, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, Kristen's saying this as well, like I, I'm not sure if you really own the goth thing. And I don't fully know what goth is, but like maybe I'm off on what it is. But, okay. To say, let's take a step back. I don't get a, a sense of an edge from you. I don't, I don't know what strong opinions you have. I don't know. I, I, I'm not even sure how to describe this, <laughs> but I find you very like even keeled, which doesn't rock my boat either way. It's very nice and pleasant right. to be around you. I think you're very kind. Well, I'm a guest on your podcast. Yes, but I'm saying... storm through the door and start yelling at you? No, but I... It's an energy thing. It's an it has energy to do thing. With. Yeah, and we talked about it with, with Susan Braddon on the show mm-hmm. as well about, like, what is attractive. Um, and one of the things that she said was, you know, somebody who... What was it? Comfortable who they are or owns who they are? or was it, and, and very consistent with what we say on the show as well. And people on the other end of this podcast are going to be like, what the fuck? You're just, like, being mean to him and you're being so inconsistent with what you're no, saying. No, 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 no. But I think overall what we're saying is, like, I don't feel you when you walk in the door. I don't feel anything that I need to pay attention to. And and, and that's really what it comes down to. And, it, it's, and paying attention to can be, like, he's super nice and, like, he's fucking nice. He's going to talk to every single person in the room. Oh, don't call me the N-word, please. <laughs> but, but I'm saying that there... and. It, <laughs> Because that's not chime an attractive, in here a little bit to, that's not an attractive thing to say to somebody. That what? About a man. That you're nice. And you know, yeah. It should be an attractive thing it to say be, about a man. It should be, but it's not. But the word nice typically is, it, if you, by definition, being mm. nice is a great thing. But what people really mean when they say nice is you're weak and beta and like you're nice to be around. I'm saying you're actually like a nice person. Mm-hmm. I can feel that you are a kind person, a good person. You right. talked about shaving your head for your friend for cancer. Like you, you do good, kind, nice things. Mm-hmm. That is not a knock to you or your masculinity. No, no, I'm not saying that you're personally mocking me. I'm saying it's not an attractive quality. And there's a woman I've had a super crush on for a long time. Yeah. And my co-host and her had like this vegan bonding thing. And uh, she's like... It's called starvation. No, no, no. They're, they're, they're both vegan, so they found it's each other depression. online. So they... They both knew me, but they didn't know each other. They didn't know that they, they're like, oh, you know, Mark. And my call was like, oh, you know, Mark. And then the girl I've been crushing, I was like, he's so nice. He's super sweet. I'm like, that's awful, isn't but you it? She's like, be, yes, it is. You want nice in combination with other qualities. Because, so for example, I went but out we with a guy last night who was incredibly nice, but he had a lot of other things as well. So he can get away with being described as nice. You know, he was very charming, out there, witty, unique, all these different things, and nice. So nice isn't always... All things I would describe myself as. Right, So just if someone says you're nice, that doesn't mean that all those other things don't exist. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't negate the others. But you're all saying that when I walk in the door, you didn't feel anything else. Well, oh, I see what... Yeah, with Marnie saying you're nice... Yeah, but that's what, that's okay. You can have a nice aura and then in conversation, step it up. A- add yeah. your edge. Yes, that's what I do. I mean, you saw, you know me to be witty and charming. I, in terms of attraction? <laughs> Not in terms <laughs> no, of attraction, I didn't. but yeah. I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't see anything that would strike attraction. Okay. I saw somebody who can joke around and who can be kind to his guests. I didn't see somebody that I would probably qualify or I didn't see somebody charming and witty. I didn't see that on your podcast. Oh, really? I wouldn't describe it that way because when I'm saying <laughs> charming and witty, you I laugh guess, quite a bit. That would I be guess, witty. But that's you've me, asked but me I back was, to be on your podcast 
apparently there was some charm there. Well, I know, but I, but that I guess I'm guess I'm thinking of it differently. Like, is if there's some attraction behind I think it? Marnie's there saying, wasn't. Right. There's a witty. And then there's a uh, then there's a sexual wittiness or a sexual charm. And what she's saying is you're not admitting the sexual part of it. And how do I admit sexual charm? How do you do that? Well, you buy my pro. No. Um, <laughs> uh, how how do you? Because when that? I when I do try to turn on the sexual charm, honestly, and I've had my friends describe it this way, it comes off a bit creepy. Well, what would be your sexual charm? <laughs> you want me to turn it on right now? Yes. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know where to begin with this. Okay, so for example, so so if you want to put out some wittiness well, that well, would create yeah. some tension mm-hmm. for us. So for example, when Kristen royally fucked up, she didn't, <laughs> actually she didn't end up because it was just a full card. But when she had said, "Oh, I didn't press record," yeah, you could have played with that a little bit instead of saying like, "Oh, you dumb idiot," that's not witty. That's being an asshole. You could have said something that was a little bit jabbing at her, which could get her to then look at you and say, oh, you do have some edge behind you. Right. But instead, instead you, you, you were s- like, like, oh, oh that's fine. okay. Yeah. It's fine. I'm, I'm, no, trying, that- I'm trying to be professional on your show. Yeah, but there's a, there, th- we get that, but there's a difference between being professional and being um, like on. So you could go like, oh, I was just giving you my best stuff and still be professional and fun, but with a little ball busting in it where it doesn't seem so passive. And still professional. Yeah. And I, we're not trying to knock you. If you are totally fine with who you who you are and what you're putting out there. Obviously, I'm not. But, and I don't, I, that's the thing. I don't want to shift you at all because I'm not trying to say, oh, you're not good enough for anything. I'm just saying why you're not getting attention and the attention that you're wanting from women. That That's, that's all that's being said here. Why are you not getting swiped on Bumble? Well, that's more superficial and flat, oh, for, so it's forget, different. But, forget Bumble. But, I'm, but I'm ready in, to quit that. But in person, why are your female friends not attracted to you? And why do they only want to have you as a friend? Right. Because you're not triggering those buttons for them. You're not pushing their buttons. You're not creating tension. You're not showing that there's some heat behind you. Right. Well, and, yeah. I, and that's what I'm saying, that I don't get the sense that, that, there, that there is right now. There could be, but I feel like you filter yourself or you cut yourself off from delivering that edge like even what you were saying now you know it's trying to be respectful and professional because we're doing a podcast which is fine and Kristen gave the example of how you could still be professional but bust our balls a little bit and I think that that's that's what the difference is that's missing and that's what I was trying to get out after and I felt horrible while I was saying it too because like the two women are listening beside us as I'm telling you this stuff but I know that you really wanted to hear these things and I know that a lot of no, I, I, I'm curious what I'm doing wrong because I've been doing things wrong it's not doing it wrong. It's it. Well, I, I'm not getting laid. That's, that's that's wrong. Right. Okay. But you're not. But you're not. Putting I, I'm trying any... to get laid, and I'm failing. Right. That's wrong. Well, no, you're trying to showcase that you're a good guy. That's what's wrong. No. Then, not at all. I could care less. Honestly, so you're trying to get. I could care less if you think I'm a good guy or not. I, I really. See I, now, I, I like I, you. <laughs> but no, that's what we're looking I, for. Somebody who could care less if you think I'm a good guy. Yeah, it's just showing a little, uh, like, not need to please everybody. No, I get it can that. Be Trust me, that's, uh, be that's one thing that, uh, you know, watching Marnie's videos I've, I've gotten is not to please. But that, that has nothing to do with my good guy energy. How do I lose that? I don't want you to ever lose your good guy energy. I just want you to develop some add, edge. Add to it. And so I actually have a couple of tools that you, you can use. So okay. on YouTube, I put up a video about hoop theory. Did you watch that one? Basketball? No. Yeah, it's all about basketball. Just be really about basketball. Right. And you'll, well, lose, you'll, you'll lose a little no, weight, though, if you... Now we know where your mind is. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Did you do another yoga pose? Well, that was great. Before. Actually, we're going to take <laughs> a you. quick little break, and then I'm oh, going yeah. to explain... Now that we get the weird witty banter. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. 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 now I don't want to hear it. And then we're going to take, take a quick break. <laughs> I bet you don't. Yeah. See? There. Now I'm into you. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back, and I'll explain hoop theory, because I think it's really important. Hey, guys. It's time to talk about Ed again. Not your boss, Ed, not your cousin, Ed, and definitely not your friend, Ed, because this Ed is definitely your enemy, and that's ED, erectile dysfunction. And did you guys know it's pretty crazy that 25% of new Ed cases, or ED, are guys under the age of 40 years old, which is pretty crazy because we think of it as an old man disease, but it's not. It's an all-man disease. And if you guys are struggling with it, which you might be, 
and trying to figure out how to fix it might make it even worse because it's like, where do you start? Well, I'll tell you where to start and that's at 4 Four Hymns is a one-stop shop for sexual wellness, skincare, and hair loss for men. And the awesome part is there's no in-person doctor visits. There's no waiting room, nothing like that. And you can try Hymns for a month today for just $5. We'll get you started for just five bucks while supplies last. See their website for full details and safety information. But this would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. Go to fourhymns.com slash wants, E-D. Not that you want it, but you know what we mean. That's F O R. H-I-M-S dot com slash wants E-D for hymns dot com slash wants E-D. Oh, and for the girls listening, did you know that hymns has a badass sister called For Hers? You should check it out. All right, we are back and we're going to dive into hoop theory. So hoop theory is basically saying that when a woman asks you to jump through a hoop, you ask her to jump through a hoop first. Okay, so if somebody says to you, oh, can you buy me a drink? You turn to her and say something like, okay, I'll buy you a drink, but you have to ask me in a British accent first. Something that Cell says... That's cute. Like, a good guy would say, yeah, of course I'll buy you a drink. But then it's like, okay, buy me a drink. And then you don't pay attention to that person in front of you. And little comments like that, which can still be kind, but they're more playful, can just help have somebody think about you differently. It's about about challenging the woman back in some way. Mm -hmm. And that things like that are, are things that I'd like you to do. Yeah, I stopped buying women drinks when I was like 25. I caught up. That's why you're not getting laid. (laughs) (laughs) They're thirsty. I guess so. No, I just, uh, I, um, you know, when a woman says, uh, buy me a drink, I'm like, I don't do that. Not on the first, not, I just met you. I don't do that. And so are you saying I should have their, say it in the British accent, do that? Well, I don't know. So continue on. How does that conversation usually flow? If you guys are having fun and she goes, buy me a drink and you say, I don't do that. Yeah, I don't do that. I just met you. I just, uh, like, usually they're, Taking it back, they're like, really? Okay. I'm like, you know what? You know what you could do is have another guy uh, buy you a drink and give it to me. And we've, I played that game a few times. But does that work for you? Because I don't think yeah. that would work for me. Does it, okay? So, so then how come? You're sometimes not... it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay, but in terms of work, what what does it do? Well, I, we get we keep the conversation going. If 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 they do get a guy to buy a drink, that they're usually uh, away from me for twenty minutes. Come back with a drink, and then the conversation goes. And it's then, actually a good but, one. And then what happens? What happens normally is uh, we have a great conversation. Uh, sometimes I get their numbers. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes we make out. Sometimes I don't. Okay. So there is making out that happens. Sometimes. Okay. But, and there has been, uh, you know, on, on occasion. But uh, lately, not so much. Usually it's a make out. And usually I, I, there's a lot of uh, cock blocking from the friends. That happens a lot. Okay, tell me more about that. You know about that. No, but tell me more about your situation for that. Well, my situation is usually, not usually, but a lot of times, the friends will just swoop in and just just grab her and I won't see her again. Right. I try to get the number or slip her my number before that happens, but sometimes it doesn't. Okay. And well, usually uh, if her friends are swooping in and she's swoop, swoop, swoopable, mm-hmm. it means she wants to be swooped away. Okay. So, yeah. So. But other other times you're saying it doesn't happen. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't. Usually, I don't know. Have I taken a girl? It, it's it's also a logistic thing in L.A. In that a lot of places I'm at are not like right next to my house. So getting her away from the club to where I am or where she is is usually a whole logistical nightmare. Well, so d- d- describe that a little bit more. Well, well, if I'm, if I'm me, in a okay. club downtown. So let me ask you a question, Kristen. If you happen to be over in Hollywood and you met this guy and he's like, oh, I live in Venice, would that be a logistical situation for you that you'd be like, no, nah, I'm not going back with you so far? Well, actually, maybe you would sometimes, but uh, if you were into if, him. If I was super into him, no, I'd go. You know, if I live in the Valley, she lives in Venice. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it's... You're taking me back. I'm just trying to... No, I wa- but I want to walk through what's actually going on. Because you're not going to find where to tweak things or how to correct things if you're not sure of actually what's going on. Um, but so you're saying... Kate, I'm just trying to go back to the last time that happened, which I, I've been moving. I've been doing a lot of comedy. I haven't been out in a while. So, and the last couple of times I've been out, it's just been a disaster. Just nothing. So I just hanging out with my friends and not even worrying about it. 
So, do you think the not worrying about it part is actually going to be beneficial? Because no, no, the no, less, not at all. I'm talking to Marnie, but I'm just asking yeah. Marnie in her opinion. You quiet down over there, guest. You know, if, easy, if easy Marnie, there. if Marnie thinks, you know, maybe or not Marnie, but if anyone backs off and just puts less energy into it, is that when stuff naturally happens? Yeah. But then, how do you put it into your control at the same time while also stepping back? It's stepping back with caring about whether or not you get laid. Like you have this pressure on you right now, right? You were even saying before, once you get laid, it'll all be reset. Right now it's at this heightened level. I would say uh, when I walk into the room, it's pretty obvious. It's been a while. Why? Why? Do you have a raging boner or something? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Why is it obvious? uh, Huh? Why is it obvious? I think it's pretty obvious. I think when you go out to the clubs, I think it's obvious. I think you can can spot who's getting laid and who's, who's not in the club pretty easy. Well, then does that mean that you're fixating on it and you're not actually enjoying yourself while you're out? No, I'm enjoying myself when I'm out. It's just not. So this is your perception of. You no, can... I'm enjoying myself, but not necessarily doing sexual things um, or approaching women. But I think if you put less importance on the fact that you haven't been getting laid and you just put more importance on your personality and what's good about you, that energy won't seep through where when you walk into the club, people know you're not getting laid. Well, this, is, this goes into what I was asking you when you were on my show, too. Sometimes I walk out, and this usually happens in a full moon, oddly enough. Sometimes I... I, 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 <laughs> I might be a werewolf. I don't know what's going on, but every, I, there's times I walk in, and I'm magnetic. Right. Women flock to me. People want to be around me, and I just have it. Sometimes I'd say I, most people have that too. But it's sporadic. It doesn't happen all the time. And I don't know. You don't know what is making it happen or not happen. Well, exactly. Try keeping a journal and writing down what you're experiencing that day when it does happen. Like just, just make note of things to see what the patterns are. Because for me, I can say the exact same thing. There's some days where I walk into my son's preschool and I run. <laughs> <laughs> and she's the mom with yes and there's the other swagger. days where i can do exactly the same thing but it just doesn't seem to connect the exact same way and that that just happens it's it's a, it's a natural thing with for the children or the adults with both i'm like i'm all over the place but <laughs> no i'm just saying there's certain days same thing where i feel extremely on but then other things don't fall into place either other people are not as on the weather is de- whatever it is there's other things that just happen it's it it it, it, it it's not about you specifically, it could just be an off day for you or the people that are around you. And here's the other thing that's weird is guys flock to me. I can walk into a gay club, get laid like that. Well, then maybe that's, that's the angle what you, you have should, to do. You I guess take. so. I guess I guess I have to. And you didn't say you need to have sex with a Abbey. woman to reset this for you. Well, I, I'm are attracted you to women. I'm not into men. Oh. Uh, I wish I was. Yeah. The things would be so much easier. And I would have really hot guys, too. Mm-hmm. I believe it. You guys see some of the model-looking guys that hit on me. Mm-hmm. Guys, I'm like, I wish I looked like you. And they're mm-hmm. like, they're jerking off to me. Wow. But, uh, and older women, over 60, can't lose. Actually, the last couple of women I've been with have been over 60. Maybe you That's who's attracted to me. Yeah. It, are you attracted to them? Uh, not every woman over 60, but the, the ones I've been with, yes. Then, then keep your eyes open for them still. Oh, I, I, I do. What do you think is different in you when you're interacting with these people? I have no idea. Well, then start taking note of it because there's something that's different. Well, it's- as far as the, 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 the gay guys, it's the, it's the bear thing. Right. Well, that's a different story. But- right. As far as the women over 60, I think possibly they're reacting to the niceness and what you're saying. And the women in their 20s, 30s, 40s are not. Right. But do you think that there's something different with you because you're like, I'm... I'm- better than you like i'm no not at all no 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 nothing in you changes there's no confidence in you that changes well there's a confidence in that and and the other the other thing is black women like me black women gay men and and really old women then who was the issue (laughs) i'm attracted to white women i know i'm just kidding um really pasty white women really really yes and what are these really pasty white women attracted to really Skinny, very shallow, very abusive guys. For the Sk- most part. Who's attracted to these people? These these guys? Oh, got chicks. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think the goth thing can be limiting. Is all I'm saying. Huh. I think you would you would do well with a. But well, here's I, the well, here's say, the truth. You want to do brutal? I, I, I don't. Do we want to do the brutal time. truth. I, I You're not getting laid because your outfit. This outfit. Yeah. Like in the rel- relative world around us, 
if you had on a nice, cool, hip, modern looking outfit, it's not shallow, it's sexy. What, what is a cool, hip, modern looking outfit? We'll show outfit? you some magazines and we'll give you a makeover and bring you to Goldie. But this, I'm, this is a, your outfit is the reason you're feeling like people know you're not getting laid. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm just telling you the truth. It's the truth. Well, it's why we wouldn't have sex with you. Right. If so you we're just telling you our to, perspective. Yeah. If you were dressed in a way that said like you were part of the society that most people are, are in, I'm not putting your society, you know, your culture down or your subsect of whatever. But the reality is most people, they see you dressed like this, like Marnie said, with the magic thing. They're like, are you doing magic for me? That isn't necessarily sexy to probably 99% of women. And there's that 1% of the crowd that you hang with that's kind of in this niche that will be attracted to it. But the problem is with the dating thing is it's a numbers game. There's so many people, but when you whittle it down and you narrow yourself down by pigeonholing yourself into one group, then your chances are going to go down much more because there's going to be so many less people to choose from. But... um... Give me an example of what a, a, a hip postmodern outfit is. If you were wearing a nice pair of fitted jeans with shoes that weren't okay. platform. Okay. Uh, part of this is I came from work and I have to wear. Yeah, but no, yeah. this is not. This is just okay. in general. You probably don't have this outfit, whether you're at work or not. Do it, I have fitted jeans? Um, and a nice. You go to, uh, you know, I don't know, Banana Republic or J. Right. Crew. Find a nice pair of sharp Jeans, not fancy, overdressed. They can just mm-hmm. be casual jeans. Right. You put on a nice either sweater that you also got from Banana Republic or button up. Mm-hmm. And you put on a pair of shoes that are nice brown, you know, laces that look like a guy that might exist in, you know, a, a nice office in New York or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you put on a cool little pair of glasses. Bam. Wow. Is this guy an art director? Wow. Who, what does this guy do? Because you mm-hmm. have a powerful look. It's just when you dress... When you dress sillily, right. you're going to limit yourself. In this, by 99% of the culture would be considered not dressed sophisticatedly. Okay. And that's a big turnoff mm-hmm. for everyone. It has nothing to do with being shallow. <laughs> for, for everybody. Everyone. But for the most part. No. For the majority of people. So you just have to accept that either you become a little bit more mainstream, streamlined, open your pool up, Mm -hmm. or you accept that it's going to be incredibly difficult to get laid and continue to present yourself the way that you do. Yeah, but you own that look. Right, own it. That's what you're going to do. That's your shit. We're Mm. we're just both saying, like, this would not be a door opener for both of us. There's there's, there's 10 other ways that you could then open our door for sure. And that could be through your personality, your charisma, your charm, your wit, 100%. Mm-hmm. That, like, that outfit would not be a big deal. Because even, like, Susan Bradham was saying, she like, the, her third date, she took her husband to the Gap and, like, he changed his style completely right. to be more attractive for her. But, and that's a different story. But what, what we're saying is that for us, it, that, it wouldn't pique our interest. It, would, it would not appeal to us. It is a smaller group of people that it would appeal to. And mm-hmm. then I'm guessing, like, what you just said, like, the goth girls who are really skinny and very pale, like, they... They I happen to be, no, no, they, well, I'm, that's I'm, a de- minor detail or whatever it is that they're right. drawn to men who are also really skinny, slightly abusive and not, not all and all in line with who, who you are. Actually, the, the, the odd thing about the goth community as a sidebar yeah. is that it does uh, fetishize larger and curvier women more than the mainstream America does. Hey, which is, which is, I, I'm attracted to larger, curvier women. You, you are attracted to larger. Yeah. yeah. Curvy woman, yeah, absolutely. Which is why I ended up in the scene. Okay. Also, uh, the fetish clubs and all sorts of crazy, weird stuff like that. But are you into that stuff? Yeah. Are you really into that stuff, though? Not to the extreme that my friends are that are actually practicing dominatrices and, and things like that. Oh, so but what yeah. level are you? Because that's what I'm saying. I don't get that sense from you. I mm-hmm. don't get that there's, like, a fetishy side to you. I don't see it at all. I see that... It would be somebody who would like slowly kind of take my clothes off, probably apologize or like say if this is okay um, <laughs> and be a bit timid. But that's, I'm just saying that's the vibe that I get from you. I don't see somebody who like when we get into the bedroom, he'd be like, okay, get on your, get on all fours and do this, this. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I'm not getting that from you. So that it's not consistent with what I think of it. And perhaps part of this is because once again, I'm a larger man. I'm conscious of that. I'm also conscious 
of I know lots of larger no, men no, no, who what, are what, what I'm saying is perhaps I dial it back. Why? Why are you dialing it back? Because I, I know that physically, even if I was wearing uh, the B- Banana P- Republic from head to toe, I'm a larger man, and I know that that can be intimidating to a woman. Or that it can be extremely exciting is, to a woman. Yeah. I will no, tell no, what, what, what you that I'm that saying, was what, an issue with my husband as well. He's a big dude. Mm-hmm. And actually, that was something that turned me off in the very beginning, that he actually wasn't more assertive with me. And I had to give him that permission to be that way mm-hmm. with me. But had he done that on his own? I'm, my point is, uh, is like, that... I mean, like, like, you know, the way your, 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 your son, uh, like, you know, just grabbed your leg when I walked in the door because I'm a big guy. Christian too. I know, but I, 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 I yeah, I, but I wonder how different his reaction would be if you weren't dressed the way you were. It'd probably be the same, I would think. I've had that reaction for quite, quite some time. Uh, children are intimidated of me. I know that smaller women, or you know, even, you know, I'm bigger than most women by a lot. And I've, I've, I've had people, you know, I've had women, you know, sort of. Uh, but that's why there's nothing wrong with being as kind as you are. And, and having that slight edge that we're talking about. And that's, that's kind of where, you know, why most men are confused by hashtag me too now. Like where to take it. And I've always erred on the side of caution. Just knowing that, you know, um, I. It, let's There's put, nothing uh, wrong with you getting into the bedroom and saying, I'm about to do like really dirty things to oh, you. I know. And are I, you I, okay I, with that? Oh, I've done that plenty. Have you? But that's the thing. From talking to you, I would never get the sense that you would talk like that. Oh, you'd be surprised. I probably would be surprised. Mm -hmm. But what what we're trying to figure out is why you're not getting that attention Mm -hmm. that you should be getting. My last girlfriend was a webcam model. There's all sorts of crazy hijinks in the bedroom. A lot of all sorts of sturdy talk, all sorts of things. From you or from her? From both. From both of you. Okay. But again, I'm telling you, I don't sense that from you. Hmm. So I'm telling you that that is not the vibe that you give off. Right. That when we get onto a webcam together, you are going to make me go crazy just with your words. I would never get that sense from you. And I know Mm -hmm. you're not trying to do that with us right now. Right. But that's what I'm telling you is that 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 is what's missing. And okay. you've talked several times about holding it back or being respectful, but, I, but I'm, I'm trying to give you the guidance that I think either you're holding it back a little too much or you're filtering it a little bit too much because it's not coming across. Okay. And that's a great surprise for somebody on the back end when they're like, whoa, this guy can talk dirty. Exactly. But I'd rather you let more women know on the front end that mm-hmm. you're going to feel really special when you get into the bedroom with me because I'm fucking amazing and I can make you wet in two seconds with the words that I say. Oh, sure. I know, but oh, sure. But I'm just saying you're I mean, not you know, presenting that message to women on, on the front end. I don't know. I, but maybe it's people that see my act that uh, sense this more than you do. And uh, maybe because I talk yeah, about maybe, I talk, maybe when you're giving because your I act, talk, I talk about giving in my ex girlfriend a nosebleed and all this other stuff. So, uh, you know, I uh, given my, uh, uh, my another girlfriend chest pains from was, frustration. No, from an orgasm. That was so huge. <laughs> okay. And, uh, just, uh, I, it's, I, trust me, I, I can talk dirty. I can really, but I don't want to, I don't want to do that until someone is willing. Okay. But how would anybody know that they'd be willing if it wasn't presented to them that it's an option? I see where you're going with this, but it, it is presented. I think we're beating a little bit of a dead horse. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really, I for, really just so for the too. listener's sake, it's, I don't know if we're really getting as far it along so as we good. should. What happened? No, it is no, good. It's just, I, it's good. Of you. No, but no. I think this is, this is actually very good because it, it, it's, it actually is an example of a lot of people that I, I my head's work hurting. With. I don't know what to do now. It's really weird. I just moved to Los Feliz. Maybe this is a new start. Maybe it is. Maybe I got to ditch my goth stuff. I'll save it for the stage though. Cause that's part of it is to, I talk about the goth and fetish clubs on stage and my look matches that. Okay. So then it is consistent with who you're putting out. Yes. To the world. Yeah. No, I, and I'm not questioning that. But that's at not all. my only, I'm, it's not my own. I, I have, mel, I'm multifaceted. I'm not goth 24 hours a day. I'm not sitting in a coffin 24 hours a day. Yeah. Mm. But don't you want to commit to that? Like if you are going to be that, just be it. I am it. Right. But when you step out of it, it's, that's the in, inconsistency that I think 
I was saying before, people, like, if one minute you're this and then the next minute you're that, it throws people off and they're not really sure how to get comfortable with you. Like, Brad P is goth. Yeah, like, he's super goth and, like, that's him all day, every day. And but he's no also way. super sweet, and I'm surprised at like how bubbly he is. Even yeah, though and you can be sweet, obviously, and be yeah. and be goth. But um, I just feel like you either need to just commit to that is who I am, and it's sexy because you don't apologize, and and it's it's who you are. It's inside. It, it comes out out of you. Or you're like, eh, that was old me. Now I'm kind of gonna get to the, back to whatever. And be regular but, but, Joe Schmo. But, but you're a comedian, uh, and people want you to be on all the time. You're not all on all the time. Yeah, but I think it's different She's not for me. even off on half I, the time. I'm not even on when you're I'm on. You're probably not on when you're on stage. <laughs> exactly, that's what yeah, I said, yeah. yeah. But for me, it's different because I don't have a character. I'm just, I am this when I'm doing a podcast or when I'm on stage, so I don't have to necessarily have as much of a transition that you have. But you have a serious you side. You have, a, you have other sides that are not, that don't fit in a uh, set-up punchline. Yeah, that's why it's uh, hard for me to have sex because <laughs> I have this personality and then I try to take this to the bedroom and it's a little awkward. Yeah. And the yeah. microphone is very uncomfortable for her partners. Anyway, <laughs> this was a very good show. I think it was, it, I think it was interesting. It's, it's good it's, to get to the bottom of wh- how you perceive yourself and how other people perceive well, yourself. We got to, to the bottom, forward. that's for sure. I don't know. I think we got close to the bottom. Yeah, you, you had to, you, you mercifully called it, but yeah, we, we got, we got to the bottom. Oh, I could have gone lower. Uh, I'll bet you could. No, I'm just joking. Um, but thank you very Go much to the for Banana Republic. No, and... listen, the <laughs> no, thing that's is, what I'm saying. it's just if you look sleek and smooth. It would be you don't sexy have to, go to, Banana to Republic, a lot but... of people. It doesn't have to be Banana Republic. Right. Go on Esquire. Go on AskMen.com. Go to GQ. Mm-hmm. See mm-hmm. what they're wearing. See how they present themselves. Right. Those dudes, they're getting laid. There's no way around it. They're male models, too. No, <laughs> no. They'll have regular guys that, like, Marnie would, works with um, Goldie, oh who my God, yeah. is a stylist. And she mm-hmm. does these makeovers. And these guys go from looking kind of dweeby and schleppy to they have not had any facial reconstruction. They have not lost any weight. She changes the way they pre- present themselves right. and they instantly look debonair, sexy. They command a room because of the way they've chosen to dress themselves or the way Goldie has chosen to dress them. Yeah, okay. exactly. Right. And it really works. It's a, it's a psychological thing that I used to think, oh, it's shallow. You know, don't judge people on the way well, they dress. Oh, yeah. no, but like, it's look not. At these guys. It's really not. No, it's, that's not gothy, so, 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 so when, when women say... It's not about the looks. It is about the looks. Like, is that gone? No, it's about how you present yourself. Because if I... Not really. So, no, that's like film noir or something. Right. I, looked up, <laughs> I, I, looked, I looked up fat goth. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not on there. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm looking up to see. No, it's... I think I would love a, like a guy like you to get into the mind of um, a woman so that you could really see how it has nothing like to do that, with like looks necessarily. Like even owning that look, right? Yeah, I mean it's a little too gothy, but I don't know. Let's see what let's see what this is. I feel like that's too much, you but it's still you don't. But it's still like you have to own whatever your body type and your look is. It's just right. like that's so it's just too much. Do I like actually, if, I, I actually have that shirt, but uh, if you get behind a woman's psyche, you'll see that it doesn't have to do with the looks necessarily. It has to do with what he says to the world and the way he presents himself. So if I see a guy who's dressed really sharply that says that he's going somewhere he's got stuff going on he's Mm -hmm. got a good job he would be um you know someone that would move forward with me in life Mm -hmm. you know if i see a guy in crummy sandals in like old cargo shorts and a gross t-shirt and you can tell that's what he wears daily i'm like no it just doesn't fit what i'm looking for in life some of those guys get laid too yeah but they're not but not as easily i promise you that and if you want to, the thing is, I think what you're doing is you're fighting everything we're saying. And I'm, I'm not, not fighting anything you're saying. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I, I'm just saying, I, I, I've, I've seen a lot of guys in cargo shorts and sandals. Are you actually physically seeing them having sex? No. Yes. I, 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 you're actually, that's what I do. I, I, I go to Venice Beach and I no, appear in windows. Yes, they, yeah. A lot of those guys do. And, they but, do, but, again, but there's more than just the style. There's a whole bunch of other things. But basically, basically, basically the bottom line sh- is I, I wore the wrong thing coming no, here no, today. No, it's not that I thought, at all. I, thought, I, I, thought I looked okay. No, you do look okay. But what we're saying is, what I am saying is it's a niche thing. It is a niche you thing. you came in it's here not going to appeal and to everybody. said, I'm getting laid like crazy and I have no problems with women, I'd say, great, keep doing what you're doing. But obviously you're, but you're- doing something wrong. And so what we're trying to do is get to the bottom of it. And, mm-hmm. and I promise you some of what we're saying, or a lot of what we're saying is incredibly valid. And if no, no, you, everything you're saying is valid. So if you shifted, just like you could experiment. It doesn't mean you have to go buy a brand new entire wardrobe, buy an outfit. 
see what changes when you when you don't dye your hair and when you put on that slack the nice slacks with the some hip shoes you go and ask the store clerk what what are you know cool guys wearing today promise you you will have a different response and it will open up your eyes and you'll go oh that felt good let me do that again and if you don't have a different response then you can go back to exactly what you're doing but at least try right and you know and the reason I feel like I can speak validly to this. I don't know if that makes sense is because I speak to this. Yes. Because validly. Authority. validly, that made no sense. So I can't mm-hmm. speak validly to it because I just said the word validly, but I just moved back to the East coast. Right. It has completely changed my energy. Marnie has seen it through just doing online podcasts. We haven't seen each other. And what I've done is almost an experiment. I took myself out of the environment that I've been in for 10 years because it just mm-hmm. wasn't working for me. Right. And I was willing to try something else and it reinvigorated me. And I mm-hmm. now put forth, I mean, right now I'm a little kind of semi hungover, so I'm not right. the best Kristen today, but what it has done is it's given me a different energy and people respond differently to a refreshed, renewed energy. Mm-hmm. And so when I got here, I got here Saturday night, right. Sunday morning, we went or early breakfast, kind of brunch time, went and got, went to Men- Mendocino Farms. Mm-hmm. and. This guy uh, that I was ordering through said, I love your energy. And I said, it's because I don't live here anymore. Right. <laughs> it changed like, my nobody's energy. ever said that to me before. And that only propels me to do even more change, to right. continue doing stuff that I didn't think I would have done before. But now I realize if I do do it, it really does mm-hmm. change. You know, like the smallest little things I'm doing every morning, I'm doing headstands, pushups, and sit-ups. And it's completely changed like the way my brain chemistry is working and I'm happier in my new environment. And Mm -hmm. so it changes the way I talk to people, the way I present myself, and then they give me a better response. And so what I'm saying is if you try a little change, you might not know that it can actually do something huge for you and reinvigorate you and start that clock all over again. Are we out of time or is there one more thing? One more thing. Okay. As long as it's uh, something I can respond wonderfully to. This is actually positive something that is uh, possible. Uh, this is somebody, you said no, some, nobody's ever said that you have a great energy, which I doubt. Oh, no, I was saying for Kristen. Oh, for Kristen. Oh, oh, you, Everybody I tells me I'm great oh, energy. Kristen's ball. Oh, okay, yes. wow, that must be a new thing. Okay. I have no balls left. She busts them so much. Oh, okay, yeah. that, that was, well, not, I'm, I'm glad I'm in the club. No, but this is <laughs> but, a new uh, thing for her, for somebody to turn and say, well, actually, yeah. they would have said that before. This is a new thing for her to beat up on somebody else. That's a good one. But uh, yeah. no, but here's the thing. Somebody did say that to me. Uh, I oddly enough was wearing a red pimp suit at the time when I met her. <laughs> but anyway, so, but I, I, I could catch her. trying to get a job. No, I was, I was, I was catching her. I don't even know. I don't even know what that means. We'll do the jokes, but, uh, I was kind of, <laughs> see, I like it. Yeah. So we were, we were, I, I could tell she was checking me out. I was checking her out. And what happened was we've been on a couple dates, but oddly enough, the dates, she seemed very disconnected on both dates that we went on. Uh, we've seen each other. I asked her out for Valentine's Day. We were going to go to an art gallery. We had things planned. And then she's like, I was like, will you be with Mike Valentine? And we were going back and forth on it. And then like towards the like three or four o'clock, she's like, sends me a meme. Will you be my Palantine? Ooh. I'm like, I'm not going to be your Palantine. Maybe she meant skin color. No. You guys like right. pale. No, it wasn't pale at the time. <laughs> she's actually got a nice tan, but, oh. um, and oh, gross. <laughs> I know. I, yes. I'll, I'll deal with it. She's, she's that. Yeah. Uh, so, and what, what you were saying, uh, she's, and then recently she's told me, cause she wanted me to go to, her, to a party with her and I couldn't do it. And, uh, she's like, you know, I, I really want you to be there. And, uh, she's like, I've got about uh, nine or 10 people that men and women that I'm considering. And you're, Top of the list, but you flaked on me Valentine's Day and you flaked on my hair. I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't, I don't respond. I, 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 I said her whole thing. I'm like, I don't want to be your pal. I want to date you. That's it. We're still friends, but I don't want to pal around with you on Valentine's Day. <laughs> so lately we've been sending memes back and forth. Just, she sent me a meme. I sent her one. We were going back and forth Mari's yesterday. Like, What's a meme? You know what a meme is. I do. Okay. You've yeah. told me before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am. So, so, so yesterday, they she memes, are memes and gifts of me. Yes. Oh my god, amazing! Oh, even gifts. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So I, I guess I didn't send a meme or a gif, and she's like, "Where's my meme or gif?" Because I just I didn't think about it. 
So I don't know what to do now. I just like, I didn't send her anything yet. Okay. I mean, it well, sounds like she's into say me. Say it's in my pants. No, it, it sounds like, uh, there, there you go. <laughs> sounds like she's into me, but I just can't close it. I think uh, she's enjoying the attention. I, 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 one in 10 is not good. I, it doesn't sound good. I don't but. like that response from anybody. I'm considering you. Be my palantine. Not right, good. Right. And then what did she say to you when now, now you, she's when like, you no. said, I, I don't want to pal around with you? She didn't send anything. But then she's like, come to my party. I'm like, well. Okay. Well, then you say, can you introduce me to other girls while we're here? Right. Okay. So the, I don't, I, there's, so, there, the thing is, she's so, telling you, you're friends. Right. You're one in 10, who right. she's considering. Right. And you're her palantine. Yes. So right now she's not feeling that with you. And right. she wasn't so wonderful on the dates. So even reverse that and just say, do you want to be with her? She kind of sucks. Plus she's like tanned. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. She's not goth. She's tanned. And, right. No she's, she's not what you're looking for. No, apparently not. She's like. This well, is, she is in a sense. She's, she's very intelligent. She's very. I mean, there's a lot of things. that uh, uh, There's a lot of great qualities. Right. But that chemistry isn't there a lot between of qualities. the two of There is some chemistry, but apparently not enough. Not enough, because like nine other people are, mm -hmm. or or three other people are above you but if you're near she, the top no, of the list. I mean, she's she's got guys coming out of the woodwork, but uh, okay. I, that I, I assume that for every woman. Well, then I, I I would stick by what you said. You made a statement. Yeah, but, I'll stick by it. But then you're not really continuing to stick by it unless you're no, just no, sending friendly texts, and it's clear that you are friends now. Right. But I she called me. She freaked out because I wasn't going to her party. I'm like, I I, I can't go. Okay, great. Let her continue to freak out. Okay. Yeah, or say, okay, well, yeah, like, introduce me to some girls now that All we're right. here. Just, if you're going to be friends, you're going to be friends, and you're going to have friends with benefits. It may not be having sex with her, but it'll be having friends, having sex with her friends. Okay. Yeah. So there's other benefits besides sex? Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of other benefits. Now Plenty. Now anyway, now we're now done with done. this show. Dark Mark. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Thank you very much for being oh, here. I can Tell people how to listen to your show because his show was really interesting. <laughs> he had his co host who was interesting. And <laughs> we'll talk more on the air regarding that. A little angry, um, but nice at the same time. <laughs> it was like she, very she's weird. She's a hard a a novelist. Yes. So oh. she was, but she, so she was interesting and like very interesting. But then this other girl who I loved, who was the bendy one. She was very cool. Anyway, he has like really interesting people cool. on his shows who are just like, just like do all these different things. And I felt like the most square person in the room. Well, you were. I was for sure. In this room, I'm still the most square person. Um, <laughs> nah, in every room, that. I'm the most square person. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really interesting. So how do yeah. you listen to the Dark Mark show? Well, let me, let me, uh, let me get off the spanking cross for a second. So as you guys have worked me over all show, <laughs> it's the, uh, it's the Dark Mark show. Uh, all the weirdos and freaks from Hollywood. It's every, um, it's on Renegade Radio every Friday night, 9 p.m. midnight in, on the East Coast. And then it's going to be on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, all the other mm -hmm. great. What's Deezer? No idea. You're no idea. probably, in, I bet you're on Deezer. And, okay. uh, and then uh, we have it on YouTube too. And, and I would recommend going to YouTube, Google the Dark Mark Show, put it in on YouTube because there's all sorts of craziness. You can see in studio. Okay. Fire. Uh, spanking. Yeah. A lot of fetish Ooh. people. Oh, he yeah. asked me what I wanted to drink when I came to his show. I was like, water? <laughs> and then the other people had like a bottle of bourbon. I, it was that they no, fire. We, yeah, yeah. No, we had fireball whiskey. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, we've got, uh, yeah, we got all sorts of fetishes. We got, uh, yeah, I all drove sorts here. I'm not, I'm a car people, seat in my car. Of, <laughs> yeah, all sorts of stuff. So actually, yeah, we had, uh, we had a sword swallower on recently. Yeah. We had Very cool. Ron Jeremy on recently. We had all sorts of, all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah. I love and, it. And, uh, goth comedian on all social media. And uh, it's um, tough love. Tough That's love with Marnie and Kristen. That's what it's supposed That's to be. That's what we should have As a segment, Marnie. I know. Tough love with Marnie and Kristen. Where, where we just kind of rip across the well, face and apart rip a new one. Tough. From... Have you, 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 yeah. Like well, because say, we're trying to drive right home help points. you. Yeah, we don't want to bullshit. So when, yeah. I come, when I come back and... I'm not going to come and tell you you're perfect. Three to six months with your hair not dyed and you're in a nice, smooth outfit. Yeah, she'll have something else for you to change. Yeah, but then you'll be a step forward. And I guarantee you'll have... Restarted your clock at that point. Oh, good. Because you'll have gotten laid. Yes. <gasps> New episodes of the Ask Woman podcast come out every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. And you guys are awesome. We will see you next week. Bye.